Now is my privilege and honor to introduce this class speaker. Name is Mark Timothy Madrino. It's called Gruco, Gruco uh, Sales Director of User Entity Behavior Analyst Analytics by uh, the Gruco Mark. Is an accomplished sales professional with over 25 successful years in the security and information technology space, five plus years in sales management, and two years in business development startup ownership venue. He runs the practice for Gruco in a seven-state region, educating Fortune 100 and up customers in the identity detection intelligence and the UBAT, UEBA market. He is a ITIL certified, has worked in the e-discovery space, security services space, and is associated with many of the top security vendors in the world. For fun, Mark likes to hunt, fish, and cook, and spend time with his family. He loves sports and has coached Little League Baseball for 10 plus years before moving to Texas in 2015 from Boston, Massachusetts. Mark has traveled the world as a missionary son and lived in 22 states and four countries before he was 18 years old. He enjoys the daily challenges of information security and IT, and Mark loves helping his clients tackle the tough issues. Let's give a big welcome to Mark. So don't leave because I'm a Boston guy, right? So I did move to the great state of Texas recently. I appreciate that. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying yourselves. You're learning some stuff. Um, how do I use this thing? This is my clicker here. So thank you. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll uh, solve the application. I'm not going to of myself. It's a good way for me to relax. Uh, it's also a good way for you to realize I'm just a human being like you are. And uh, if I have a sense of humor, I always have to do my different living. Uh, so, uh, this is cool that I get to speak here. Can, can you hear me? I mean, okay? Okay. Uh, because I am from Boston, I'm Italian, and I didn't get a second cup of coffee this afternoon. But if I did, I'd probably talk faster. So, if I do talk fast, for some of you, I know you guys are slow from Texas, right? So, just say, hey, you know, slow down, what do you mean? Okay? We're fast uh, talkers. Huh? You're, 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 we're fast yeah. talkers. All right, good, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. So, uh, so I hadn't broken down and bought like a cow in my hand or buffalo boots or anything like that yet, but I'm working on it. I'm, I'm going to slide it pretty soon. Um, so thank you. And so one of the things I'm going to cover today, and uh, let me ask you a question. How many people are security-focused people? That's your, that's your realm. Okay. And anybody in the identity management or PAM or IEM? Okay. Well, I already talked to you. Good for you. Uh, network? Applications? Network? Application? Okay. So, uh, you know, Marty did a great job reading my bio. So, uh, I've been in security about 25 years. I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day from Boston, and we were just kind of chatting, and uh, <clears throat> his birthday's coming up. Uh, so is mine. I'm going to be 30 again, which is great. And he, uh, I was calling on his birthday because it's the same day as mine, December 17th. So if you want to get a gift or something for me, just get a card for me after I'm done. So he, um, so I called, we are talking, and he said, uh, how long have we known each other? And I think it was the, the inception of a firewall. We worked together back on Checkpoint. The guys that know Checkpoint here, the security guys. Back, way back in the day, right? So uh, that's how I've been kind of selling this stuff and talking about it. Uh, and so I want to cover an area uh, today that historically security people don't talk about very much because they don't know it. And it's the other side of the threat plane, right? And because it's not that you don't know it, or you're not curious about it, it's, but it's a different realm for you. It's, uh, uh, it's access and entitlements and all kinds of things that we normally don't, uh, don't talk about uh, in the security side. And you don't even get visibility to it. Would you agree? I hope so. 
So here's the premise of what we're talking about today. Uh, the count minds and misuse of identities are at the core of the modern threat. If I do this, is it change? There it is. All right. That's an improvement. There's an improvement. I'm going to walk back over there. Right? I told you I'm technically challenged. I got the Apple TV thing at home, and I just thought I'd figure using it yet. But my girlfriend did, so that was good. Um, so I like to add to this a little bit, too. I know I'm kind of reading it, uh, and I want to entertain you, but I want you to learn something from this because it's. Uh, we're in a whole different realm today, okay? Uh, firewalls, DLP, SIMs, all the stuff you guys know and are familiar with and have touched and used day in, day out, are not cutting it because we still have threats. And I'm gonna cover some of that stuff today with facts, not sales talk, not marketing, but I'm gonna give you real facts from research that we've done. I'm gonna give you some use cases of real life scenarios. I'm gonna talk about the most popular ones that we see in our customer base. Uh, and I'm also gonna, I'm gonna stay away from what Guru Call does but I am going to throw in some stuff to set traps. So when you go to the side to look at a UEBA or you go look at a Denny Analytics, you go look at something to solve some of the issues you're having every day in your environment, um, you'll know what to look for, right? Whether it's me or someone else. And I'll tell you real quick, I had a customer the other day say, hey, I want to protect my environment, but I don't want to give you access to everything because I don't think those users on, on one side of the business are a threat. I'm like, if you're not going to give me everything, then how can I protect you? I can't protect just this if you don't give me access. Uh, if you don't give me the right information, and, and a lot of people, man, their AD and LDAP environment is just a, a mess, right? So this is the, where the core of the problem is coming from, right? I like to say it's not just the, the, the compromise of misuse, but it is, the, it is the, the misuse of the problem. The problem is that we don't know what's going on in our environment based on users' entitlements and uh, accounts. So, I'm going to look at some notes here because this is only the second time I've done this presentation. And there is a lot of content. Um, and I only got 26 slides, so uh, that's a big surprise from sales guy. I'm thinking I probably have 100, right? But I don't want to kill you. And we got 45 minutes. I practiced it a bunch of times. I can do it about 40, 43, unless I, you know, you start laughing at my jokes, and I, you know, I kind of feed off of that, so I don't want to do that. But we're going to cover a couple of areas. <clears throat> so at the uh, uh, at the uh, surface of the threat, what I want to talk about first, right? And what are we talking about? We're talking about insider threats. We're talking about account hijacking. We're kind of about, talking about data exfiltration. Cybersecurity fraud, obviously, is 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 always being talked about. Uh, we're talking about you know account abuse, right? So this is at the uh, the first premise is really at the core of the modern threat, and this is the root of the problem. Like I said, so it's interesting. This the press always <clears throat> always uh, blows up the cyber threats, right? Cyber security. Eighty percent of all cyber threats and security are because of compromised abuse accounts. That's true, but if you look at the Rise report, the DDA report, anyone read that thing? Pretty interesting, right? fell asleep in the first couple of pages, but, but I got this what I wanted to get out of it. What I wanted to get out of it was, it's not really true what people make up. They, you know, they kind of over uh, embellish what the numbers are, right? So here's the real numbers. I got them right in front of me, so there's no confusion, right? So the press mixes them all up. The threat versus outside threat versus high tech accounts, you only, you'll see sticks like 60 to 80%. So that's okay, but the insider threat and the external compromise is really what we want to look at for the report. And by the way, Verizon has been doing this report and doing this data and, and gathering all this data since 2009. So it's pretty credible data. Uh, but the problem is, it's not 6 or 8%. It's really about 9% of compromised accounts and about 11% of the accounts that really got compromised by someone clicking on something and that's where the data expectation happened. That's where you're getting something. And oh, by the way, they're not just getting users, they're sucking down the whole databases, right? And then they're requiring <laughs> on a website somewhere, right? That's the problem. So what do we do about it? Let's see if I can run right away. All right. Good. Why just for a living? So identity is a perimeter, is what we want to look at now, right? So here's here's all the outliers, right? We got uh, how many people know of too much access? Say XX access. How many times can you say that? <laughs> you know, that's a tough one, right? Say it five times. You got your access outliers, you got tons of account volume, you got orphan accounts, orphan accounts could be dormant accounts as well. 
You got rule-based stuff, uh, and you got privilege access. What I want to do is, you know that report I just mentioned? I'm going to go back for a second. You know that report I mentioned? So cyber fraud, this is the one area I didn't mention. Cyber fraud is the one area that's really up. I think they said it was up uh, about 15, 20%. This past year, I think. I think that's the number, if I remember right. But, but I wanted to mention that because that's an area where uh, I'd love to talk to people about cybersecurity. So the people have the IBM. So this perimeter is a problem. If you got too much access and you got access outliers, too many volume forms accounts, rule based roles, and privilege accounts, you know, identity manager, that's a whole that's a big mess. It's been a mess for many, many years, right? Would you agree? So what are you gonna do about all this stuff? We gotta do something with it. Um, you got you got your dormant accounts and you got too many accounts. The rule basis, the roles and stuff, that's just traditional rule mining, right? And and you got a bunch of shared accounts, that's that's some of the problem too. Uh, there's been a lot of focus lately on um, so that we're really starting to look at privilege access now, right? That's where I think we're kind of going with this thing. And it's always been down to the entitlement level. That's really what we need to do now. We look at the entitlement, not just how many accounts you got and you know what you're abusing or potentially could be abused, but looking at that. And then what we want to do from that part, after entitlement level, we want to start putting some risk scoring around the account, the entitlement, and the users of those accounts. Does that make sense? And the reason why I do this The reason we want to do this is because it's the, the, the amount of sheer volume, right? Uh, I don't know what the number is. I bet you guys do. Some of you do that, like read, read stuff all the time. But the magnitude of data that's growing every day because of all the devices. I got four or five, right? Devices on myself. I'm storing all kinds of data in the cloud. I'm storing it on local hard drives. I'm storing it at work. And we're storing so much data today. I don't even know what the what the numbers are. But it's uh, it's astronomical. It's growing, growing, growing. So that's that's one of the real problems, uh, and we're going to talk about that a little bit on the next slide. So what's what's the objectives, right? So I got my guineas in the middle. We got we got you know we got UVA or traditional predictive risk through identities. UVA on the side. Everyone knows what that is, right? User behavior analytics. Okay. We got that, and that's cool. We want to have that. Uh, and today, things are changing on the, on the user behavior and website because we've adjusted, or we've adjusted, we've discovered and developed machine learning now. How many times have you heard machine learning today? Anybody? Yeah. Twice? Three? Oh, besides me, I mean, I, keep, mm -hmm. I said twice? No, someone else. So that's three times. That's not bad. Uh, how about big data? Do you hear big data what times today? Anybody? It's a big buzzword. But what about IoT? You sick to hear about that? Uh, IoT and everything, right? I want to run with something that IoT. Who wants to have their refrigerator on the internet? Is that me? I don't know. Some guy hacks my house, all my meat goes bad while I'm cooking. It's not like anything I want. Like the webcam inside the, inside the fridge. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that out. You can see milk and cookies at 3 in the morning again. That's not exciting. <laughs> they can get you to your diet. So, but and so, we got these two disciplines, right? We got the UAV stuff, uh, and what what is UAV looking for? It's looking for flight risk, right? It's looking for compromised accounts, looking for data exfiltration. Uh, it's looking for someone doing something they shouldn't do. But you can't do that with just uh, with signatures and rules anymore, because if you start, if you keep doing that with signature and rules. Here's my trap. I just threw a trap out there for you. You caught that one. Out. If you do it just to a rule, you're no different than your firewall, your DLP, all the other technology, SIM, web content, all the other stuff, right? Because that is known data. What are we looking for? Looking for known data? Let's keep doing what we're doing. Do the same thing. I think we're looking for unknown data, and this is what we need to help, help you do. And the reason you are looking for unknown data is because that's where the hacks are coming from.
So it's not rule-based stuff, it's not signatures, it's not patterns we're looking at in UABA. We might look for something else, right? Then you have this other side. Anyone know what IDA is? We're, we're trying to guard her to change it a little bit. They're calling it identity analytics or identity intelligent analytics. Uh, excuse me, we spent about, I don't know, a week hammering, hammering at uh, Gardner, and I think we're meeting with them in a couple weeks too. We're trying to get Gardner to change this to identity analytics because it's really the identity is the problem. Uh, and this is really where the attack surface is happening. So it's cool, over here on this side, it's cool that we can identify what a bad abuse is or, a, or behavioral abuse is, or we can. We can look at anomalous behavior, you know, Marty's, you know, cheating on his test over here, and, uh, or you know, he's going somewhere he shouldn't go, or he's, uh, someone cloned an account and gave him access to a title he shouldn't have because they were lazy, right? So we can kind of see that, that's normal behavior, and then what's, what's abnormal over time, but machine learning is where we want to kick it up a notch, right? And uh, there's a lot of players in this marketplace all of a sudden out of nowhere, one year, two years, three years, I mean, they've been, now they're saying they've been around four, five, six years, but they're not really using machine learning, they're, do, they're doing rules. And if you do rules, then you rely on human intervention. And humans are going to make for a couple of reasons. One, we're not that smart sometimes. Two, we're lazy. Uh, three, we're in a hurry. Four, we're not accountable, I don't think. Uh, and that's where all the rubber stamping comes in. Uh, I'm going to talk about that in a second, too. Uh, open one with vanity. Um, so, on this other side, with this IDA, uh, Gar Garner's trying to call it IDA, or I'm hoping they will. Uh, this is the real game changer, this uh, uh, identity analytics part. And I'll tell you why. <coughs> because machine learning brings you context based on a lot of data. And if you got a SIM, you got a firewall, you got logs, you got VPN logs, you got authentication servers, you got LDAP, you got all these all this information, but it's already, like I said, it's known information. We're looking for unknown information so we can do something with it, so we can start predicting and analyzing and looking at risks, right? So when we start looking at machine learning with mega data, lots of data, uh, then we can start looking at the normal behavior, the abnormal behavior, good behavior, bad behavior. And then we can start putting a risk score on not only the user, but we can put risk score on the entitlement. And then we start putting risk score on the data that the entitlement is associated with. Does that make sense? So when we do that, now we have something to, to put a risk score around. So say Marty here, oh, you don't mind if I pick him up. Okay. So Marty over here, uh, his, uh, his normal account is a uh, risk score of 20 or 30. So he's not a threat, he's a standard user. Right, so he's not a super user. He's not a considered a high privilege access user. He used a regular user. So I start in the company, and I'm going to do the same role. But Martin's been around for 15 years, and this is something we didn't know. But he's got a title that's underneath his standard account that no one's looked at. It's probably on a cell spreadsheet somewhere. And uh, what's your name, sir? Ed. Ed. Ed's the boss. He's a busy guy. You know, because Sarbanes Oxley in 2003 came out and said you need to look at these things every 90 days if SOCs support that particular company. Um, and they, so they, they just, uh, so Ed, he's busy, he just copies me and clones the account, gives me the same access Marty has. We start using identity access along with UEBA using machine learning, we're going to find out that I shouldn't have access to the stuff that he has underneath his account because he's been around a while, right? And oh, by the way, uh, five years ago, maybe that data that he has access to, access to the entitlements, it probably wasn't high privilege data then, right? But it is now, right? Maybe the government public. Or maybe you have a bunch of uh, new patents. Maybe you're a manufacturer with a lot of intellectual property is important to you. Does that make sense? So we gotta, we gotta, we're gonna focus on this side more, on the ID side. I got 30 minutes, I can hurry up. And if, um, if, if there's something you want to learn from UABA, I'll put it virtually for a Google call. We have a website. We have uh, webinars every week on Thursday, uh, I think Thursday, uh, 9 and 4, 4 p.m. And if you uh, don't want to get a live one, you can, you're all taped. You watch it. You register, we'll approve it, and you can download it. So, next slide here. Okay. Here's where the fun begins right here. I'll let you 
digest that for a second. So a Denny is a profile. So we have a user. I'm afraid you saw a lot of Just here, that moment. I'm a little trouble. So this is the user. And I like to, and I know that we like to associate users with people, right? So let's talk about people, right? You're a user. You're a user. So you're a user. And these are all the accounts that you have. And then we have entitlements. So let's do some quick math. 10,000 users, pretty good sized company, right? But there's a lot of them in the Dallas Fort Worth area, a lot of them, right? A lot of them moving in here. So you got 10,000 identities with 10 accounts each, with 10 entitlements each, which is really rather low. I mean, I know I have entitlements, I probably got 20 or 25, I'm just a sales goofball, right? But if you're an engineer or a, or a DBA or a CISO or a security manager or a network manager or a senior VP in a company, I mean, you got tons of entitlements, right? Let's do the math real quick. So about 10, 10, and 10, that's a million entitlements. How are you going to handle that with an Excel spreadsheet? How are you going to manage that? And you can't lie to me and tell you you can. Let's go back to my stocks example, right? It's been around since 2003. Starbucks, Oxley, you got to rub, you got to do something every 90 days with these users. And so the manager, he's got 40 guys underneath them. They're all engineers, database administrators, security guys, janitors, whatever. You got 100,000 entitlements. What's he gonna do every 90 days? Yeah, no, okay. cool. I'm busy. I got a big project I gotta get done. I got 10 other things the CIO and the CISO are asking me about. Right? So I'm not telling you that you don't know, I'm, I'm, but I'm going to share some stuff and some use cases in here that will help you see that you got to do something different, right? That's the whole thing. I'm going to challenge you to leave here with good information that's factual, Mark's not making it up, we did our research, and then you got to do something with it, okay? So before the use case, think about that 10,000. We just uh, we just acquired a new customer, you can probably go on our website and figure it out. 150,000 users. 150,000 users, just use the example, 10 accounts, 20, 30, 40, 50 entitlements. How many is that? You better give yourself another abacus, right? I mean, <laughs> you can't get out that quick. And you're never going to manage those users with Excel spreadsheet. You're not going to manage them with a SOC. You're not going to manage them with an IDM. You're not going to manage them with a PAM because they don't talk with security. IDM, PAM, all the provisioning guys, all your all your authentication guys, all those guys are sitting in a whole different group, and here you are in security going, what is going on over there? Right? It's been happening for years. So here's the most popular use case that we see. I'm like, it's not a customer, it's just this is the most popular one. Here's where we start, what are we trying to do? Figure out who's got access. Where are we gonna get it from? Right from here. How in the hell are you going to do discovery from, from your identity name solution or your PM? It doesn't do discovery. Okay? It's been around for 20 years. So we're trying to get to this. Who has, and who can I predict, has access to the user potential? Who's my guys? Who's my bad people? On the other side, on the ID side, in the analytics, we're looking at entitlements now. We're not looking at the, the person, we're looking at the entitlements. And the only way you can get this done can't be done by human. Just can't be done. So we got to learn. We got to rely on code, an open, intelligent uh, AI that gives you the data you're looking for over time. One of the coolest things. Well, it's not the coolest thing. It's one of the dumbest things I get asked. So I get asked a lot of dumb questions. Right? Like, like provoke it. Um, but I get asked questions all the time. Hey, I, my plug is to plug your product in. So we're not talking about Google Code. We're saying we plug our product in. How long before we start seeing some results? Well, that's a great question. So like a, that's a buying signal for a sales guy, right? But you know what I answered? Well, how much data do you give me? Because if you give me two sources, five sources, ten sources, and it's wrong data, uh, I don't know, six months from now, you might see something. But I'm going to call, I'm going to come and go with some, some stats from you. So this is the, I'll go with some stats and some new takes in a second. But without machine learning and some enhancements, you're never going to get to this. You need to reduce the privilege access plane. You need to reduce the unknown. 
right? And I think I've already established that your SOC guys are smarter than they are, and I'm sure you love them, they're great workers, they're loyal, they're smart. And your SIM, and your DLP solution, your firewall, next gen firewall, whatever the next thing is going to be, it's not going to get you the unknown. Right? It's only the known. So I don't want to be that more. So we got to do a new, we have to have a new approach to this thing. Right? <clears throat> My example of the 10,000, what if that company was 200,000 users? Right? So we did the, you did the math for me, sir, you're great with math. But that's a lot of numbers, 53 million, right? And there's companies all over the place like that. Uh, I've got a company right here locally. They, looks like they, um, they got 300,000 users. How are you going to put your arms around that? You can't. So we need a new approach. We've got to do something else. Uh, and we got to get out to the title level. That's the only way we can get our arms around this thing. It's the only way we can get our arms around who's got what and and what are they doing with it, right? And the only way you can do it, I've already talked about, is machine learning. Um, and you gotta get in some big data so we can, this new approach that I'm talking about, you gotta get a little more granular. So here's that big, big, big data thing again, right? People love talking about big data. Um, so big data is really learning, taking all the data you have from all the, as many sources you can give it, put it into a model, that will do something with it and start spitting out the intelligence you're looking for that you don't have these security tools. So let me, here's three things that we do, if you recall, right? So we do all three, UEBA, IDA, and cloud. Oh my gosh, I covered the whole thing. So if I decide to look at UEBA and I want to look at entitlements and in, in the, the entities, I look at my cloud users. So I'm going to set a trap, here's another trap. If you look at this type of solution down the road from me or anybody else, I don't care who you buy, or who you're looking at, or who you want to plan for 2017 through 2020. And Gardner says this is going to be, um, I think they're saying it's going to be a billion dollars in 2018, this, this industry, which is really small, right? We're, at the, we're kind of going up the, going up the, the hill right now, the chasm. So you take those three things, and then you start looking at the identities. And then you look at accounts, and the access, and the activity, and the risk. That's what we're going to look at, right? And the problem is, because of all this identity and the accounts, the access or over access or over accounts and all the rest, everyone's got to, we have a problem right here. Here's the problem, is that there's a trail of digital exhaust left behind. So big data, when I talked about, I want as much information as I can get out of you, right? If we're going to do a proof of concept, or you're going to proof of concept with anybody, if you're trying to get to machine learning, you need to give it everything. Give it all the data. And when you do that, um, there's so much there's so much exhaust out from the user community, uh, it, it leaves a trail. <clears throat> and you're going to need to get uh, this new approach with machine uh, machine learning and, and data science uh, to do something with all that exhaust, right? So you, it, this will help you become a little more granular if you, if you follow me, right? So here's all the data sources that we're going to need. If you want to learn who has access and their activities, then you need to look at your traditional IAM solutions, look at privilege accounts, look at the directories, SIM and logging management, your firewall, VPN, who knows what SWG means? Anyway? SWG? Uh, look at the cloud apps. Look at your debt flows, database, authentication, file servers, and any threat intelligence or any vulnerabilities. So this is all the stuff, this is all the stuff that you're gonna get from your traditional security products, and then you're gonna get other other things from uh, your the other side of your of the business that the security guys really don't have uh, uh, vision into, right? So what we want to do is get all these sources so we have some real context, right? So once we can get all this access all the data, and customers will ask us sometimes, um, um, can I give you historical data? I'm like, yeah, sure, I love it. The more the barrier, right? The more data that you can give me in my machine, the more I can chew on to look at all the anomalous behavior, all the, the bad behavior, all the normal behavior, all the applications, all the users across the whole environment, 
the more I can look at, the more I'll have to context. But I'm kind of nice to context now. I know what's normal. I know what's not. It's the customers that say, I'm going to give you my firewall logs and my VPN logs and my Active Directory or LDAP, and that's it. I'm like, all right, well, that's the way you want to do it. But we may not see anything that is relevant to you, right? Um, and, or we may have to dig through it. And by the way, I have 14 data scientists on our staff. So if we have the right data to context and get a, get a real look at it, we're going to find something, right? It may not be like Earth Shatter, like, oh my gosh, I'm ready to go. Let's, let's, let's implement this thing. So user and entity behaviors together, what are we looking at? I already mentioned before, we're looking at this. We're looking for unknown stuff, right? This is normal. All of a sudden, oh my gosh, there's something there. And then, oh my gosh, this is really something there. We're looking for the unknowns. The unknown unknowns, if you want to say it that way. So what do we do? Step one. Behavioral and machine learning, right? So we want to get up to this and start putting some risk scores around things and look at normal stuff, right? Everyone loves a big GUI, right? We all love GUIs. Right? So we need machine learning to baseline. Oh, by the way, here's a little trap. I don't mind telling you on the trap. So I'm going to sell you, but I want to, I'm not going to get into my specifics. Is we have a, in our model, we have 250 actors already pre built. Not rules, not static stuff. 250 attributes already built. So we need to suck data in to our data lake and turn the machine learning on with data science. We already, we're already rock and roll right here. We should find something. Uh, we're adding uh, probably 10 to 15 every version, about two versions this year. Uh, this will learn what normal is, and I don't have to spell it out for you, right? You can read. And then here's another, uh, I'm going to throw another one out here. Here's another trap. So if you do decide to take a look at stuff, you don't consider us, make sure you consider this. Peer groups for clustering. So I'm going to explain what it is. Not everyone's heard of it, and most people have it. So we know what a peer, a peer is, right? Right? I'm a peer of yours. You know, you're an IT guy. I'm a peer. We've been around the same company, same skill set, same certification, maybe the same pay grade, right? That's a peer. So we establish that. That's easy. So Marty again. Marty, okay? I want to embarrass you. So Marty and I are up here, and we each have the same entitlements and accounts and access to those accounts, right? How do I make sure, I already kind of alluded to this a little bit in, in, in earlier, right? But, but how do I make sure that when there is a outlier or a problem, right, that it's okay, right? If, now, if, if Marty goes on vacation, like I mentioned before, and I'm filling in for him, and Marty never accesses anything remotely from a VPN or never accesses anything at 3 o'clock in the morning, it may not be anomalous because Ed gave me access to cover for him. Right? So that's not, okay, I got to work. Yeah, Mark's covering it. He's cool. But tomorrow, tomorrow I may, I may do it from China or Russia or India or wherever. I'm going to pick you up. Okay, Trump started. Yeah, okay. Anyway, thanks, though. Right? So that's, a, that's going to be a definitely anomalous behavior, right? But if I start looking at peer groups and clustering of groups and people, this will speed up the machine learning based on dynamic peer groups for more accuracy. Let me explain what dynamic peer groups because we have a patent on it. So my competitors don't, so I'm sure there's one in the room. That's fine. But they don't, have, they don't have what we have from a patterning perspective. So. When you have a risk score, so Marty's got a risk score of about 20 as a user, and his entitlements have a risk of 40. Remember, I go back to that story where I said, I just started, and Ed was, I'm sorry, lazy. And Ed hired me and just gave me all the same entitlements. Well, if I have this alert, and I don't have any way to look at all the dynamic peer groups to cut up on accuracy, to get rid of the outliers, and start cutting down the accounts, you look at that risk score, and I have this crazy uh, request for, you know, I want to get into something that has a risk score of 90, and Ed gave me the same access, and I shouldn't. That's going to look, I'm just going to look at my peers now. I'm going to look at the rest of the group and go, do any of the other people in that group have privileged access to the same intelligence at that score? No, they don't. Stop, right? Raise the flag up, it goes to Ed, Ed sees that it's a problem, 
be on Marty's twin, right? Of a hacker. So this will really, this is really, uh, this is really the game changer when it comes to machine learning from a behavioral perspective. Now, if we go to step two, go a little further. IDA is predictive machine learning. So we got we got the Jim, James up here, right? The James body smile every time. He's got, he's, this, I'm looking at these blues, this is cool right here, I'm fine, he's got, you know, he's a blue. But, what if James goes and access to something he shouldn't? What if he requests something he shouldn't? Right? The only way you're going to be able to figure that out is, over time, what his normal behavior, and this is actually a picture of our GUI, uh, machine learning folks on the knowledge stuff, and when we start doing predictive stuff with IDA, this is where we get this. Another trap. A lot of customers, a lot of competitors in this space that say they use machine learning don't have any risk scoring available to them because they haven't figured it out. Right? They're only using known data to come up with something. Right? So do yourself a favor, do the research, make sure you have something that uses risk scoring, leverage behavior patterns and threats out of a library, learns time based normals and what's acceptable workflows and operational stuff. You know, by the way, we have 189 models for this right here for right now, too, so that's cool. And before I get this use case, I got a couple of them. This is not for everybody. And I talked to a customer today, a big customer, insurance company down in San Antonio, and the guy says, you know what, I got so many products on my plate, I know this is something big that I need to dedicate my time to, we're just not there yet. But I want to talk to you, and I want to learn, and I think we need it, and we have threat problems we, we know about, but it's, it's got to have to wait. There could be other customers that don't understand it, so we need to talk to a security guy, talk to CISO, talk to security manager, operations guy, uh, security you know, uh, architect. They, they don't get this stuff. You know why? Because they're not have, they don't have access to it. They don't. They don't know what it is. It's not that they don't know what it is, but it doesn't make sense to it because they're not looking at the entity. They're not looking at the user account. They're just looking at where can you go, and how can I stop you, and how do I learn if you do something that you should try to go somewhere you shouldn't go, right? As a sales guy, I'm a horror show for IT or security, because I'm, like, I'm doing research, I'm reading, and I'm downloading stuff, I'm trying to learn about my prospects and customers, I'm trying to learn about the space, uh, traveling all over the world. That's a, that's a whole big problem. So, uh, case study, 20 minutes. Case study, large manufacturer, it's always a large manufacturer, right? We shop so big, 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 big. So this is, a, this is an actual, uh, uh, a large manufacturer. And uh, if you go to our website, you can figure out who it is, they can actually have a report on our website. But uh, a large manufacturer, what, what, they, what are manufacturers worried about? They're, they're crown jewels, right? And lots of property. So they already had, they already know uh, some stuff based on next gen firewalls, IDS, IPS web content, filtering, all kinds of stuff. They already know what that stuff is. But what they didn't do, or what they wanted to do, they wanted to focus on the identities, right? And what they did is, second day using a UVA, so I'm gonna say it again, I'm not plug and play. If I plug it in, it's not gonna just give you something. In this case, we had a lot of data sources, like a lot, right? And we could take it a turn. We could take in more data faster than you could give it to me, because we run out of dupe. Right? So you need a big data lake, we're going to talk about data lakes in a second. But in two days, we found research counts that are already hijacked. And I know you guys are in this business more than I do, because you're touching the keyboards, and you're reading, and you're going to these shows, and you're going to, uh, you're reading about hacks, and, you're, and you have to step on it, it's your livelihood. It's how you get performance reviews, it's how you get a good money, it's how you get smart, it's how you get promoted, it's how you get recruited to bigger places and better places, right? It's how you provide better for your family. So, hackers are smart, man. They really are. These accounts, they hijacked them, they didn't do anything. Thank goodness, this is a company that everyone knows, but said the name, like, oh my gosh. But they, they, they sat on these accounts, they've been in there a while. So that's one use case, that's a real one. This right here is a, a large insurance company, again. Um, big one. What they wanted to do, this is, this is actually one of the best use, I love this one, actually this was one of my customers. I love this because she called me up, and she they called me up and go, where do I sign? That's what, that's what she said to me. Now, let me tell you why. What they wanted to do, they knew there were some problems, 
made a deal with her when she was uh, running all of security, uh, 11 divisions, 12 divisions, uh, all across the world, I think about 40,000 users. They wanted to do some kind of self-check and self-audit so they could give SOC, give the SOC team more context when they had a ticket open, they do something with it. They wanted to squawk down the, the false positives too. So we, she wanted to get her own, this is something we do, we do risk scoring, I mentioned that already, right? She wanted to read the report of high privilege access accounts. Where are these, where are these hacks coming from for the DBA report? High privilege access accounts. They're after, they're after the big guys. They're after CEOs, CIOs, they're after, you know, Donald Trump, the Democratic Convention. They're after people that are crappy about security. So they're looking at high privilege access accounts. So she said, I want to report. That's what, that's what I'm doing. I don't care about all those stuff you do. I don't care about anomalous behavior. I don't care about anything. I want to risk for my high privilege access users. And I want to have some context. And I want to report every week. Well, guess what happened? Her, uh, her child had a weird thing, like an allergic reaction that, you know, that she's loving. She had to go to the hospital. I mean, for two days, she's getting the hospital. I'm like, this, is all, like, this kid's never been sick. Out of the blue, this weirdest thing in the world. Got a phone call, I got to go to the hospital. She's at the hospital for two days with him, sleeping in the bed with him. He gets better. She goes home on Friday, showers up, goes into work. Only thing she had checked was really her email or her, her smartphone. She didn't access VPN, she didn't access any databases, she didn't log into anything. And we find on her report, her alone, compromised account three and a half years ago. Same thing, the account never got, never did anything. Nothing happened yet, but that was just one account. And we're only looking at about uh, 30 high privilege access accounts, just 30. Uh, the company has got 36,000 employees. So 30, so there, this was just a weird freaking thing, right? She was just like, oh my gosh, get in here. So we did, and then, uh, so now they deployed UEBA and, and IBA, and, and what really did it for her is she got the report, and she knew exactly that there was context around it, right? There was like, I got, I have my own account that I haven't touched in three and a half years starting to compromise. These guys are smart today. The smartest, uh, the smartest breaches and as far as attackers are not going to get caught. They're going to get in your environment and just sit there and wait. You know, back in the day, you know, 10, 12 years ago, they were just trying to use you as a, a, a launching site to go do something else, to attack, right? They still probably are. I don't know. But they want to get in there and just wait and find something that they're going to fish around. They're going to be smart, right? They're not going to just go, oh, let's go attack this guy. He's the CIO or CFO. They're not going to come after you. They're just going to wait. They'll be around, wait for you to leave, leave an account dormant. Or a high privilege access account and title you haven't used in a while. They're just going to wait around and look for something they can do. So this is, what, this is a cool use case. Uh, and this is really not a use case, so here's our duty again. But from a UBA use case perspective, this is probably what we're seeing most of the time. We're seeing account hijacking, right? We're seeing uh, account sharing and abuse, privilege access abuse, data exfiltration. I'd say everything from cyber fraud up. Is our normal use case, right? It's about 20 years, If you want, uh, catch me later on, and uh, if, uh, I'll give you a card, or I'll give you a card, email me. Uh, I'll email back you with, uh, I have like 33 of the most detrimental use cases, right? I'll share it with you. I'll let you keep it or give it to my competition. But those are the, those, those, these are probably the top, though, right? And, and that little trap I said, make sure you got something bidirectional. Make sure you're working with someone who can, you know, has some API integration that can close the loop for you, right? If you don't, you got, you know, this pretty UI that doesn't work with anyone else, you're getting all the information, you're not going to close the data, all the, all the loops, but you can't get all the integration into you. You can't, can't get all that context into your system, right? So here, here's my favorite slide. The Denny Analytics, we're going to spend just the rest of a few minutes with this, and I'm going to try to break and shut up and get out of here, because I'm going to be my mouse Was anyone here at 7.30 this morning? Did anyone see me slip and fall in the lobby? No. Oh my gosh. I walked in this morning and I hit that before the carpet and I knocked off my head. And I went like it was like one of those cartoons, you know, with the feeling. I went right on my back. 
I like, and I don't, I know what you think I'm like 150 pounds, I'm not. Uh, I'm pushing 225, and uh, I'm all dressed up, and I'm like, first thing I thought is, did I hit my head? I didn't, that was good. Uh, probably broke the pile. Uh, but then I thought, oh my god, who saw me? <laughs> right? So anyway, so that's why the little yellow coats are out there. So I'm still with you today. I'm like, okay. Got a couple towel I'll give you. I'm telling all uh, the red pills they do something pretty good. Uh, so this is really where identity analytics is important, IDA. Right? And why is this important? Because we got this we got this huge keeping problem and gap. Remember I kind of talked about a little bit of, of IDM and PAM, right? There's a problem. They can't discover. Right? We got administration over here, they're just looking at who has access to what? Right? Who's got access to what? Who's got to give access to? And should they have access to it, right? And then over here, we got activity. Now, what are they doing with it? And then you got the the analytics in the middle. What we're trying to do is we're trying to give you some context and give you some dynamics through uh, not just managing the risk. Or on the, on, the, on the risk, but, but looking at taking this identity access management to a whole new level, giving it the horsepower and discovery mechanism that it just hasn't had in the last 20 years or 15 years. And frankly, it's not going to get any better. Our founder sold her company to Sun uh, in 2007, and, uh, and of course, uh, Oracle bought Sun, right? And where, why she sold her, she sold too early, she told me, but why she sold too early was because. She was kind of in this, this uh, Danny access manager space and realized a nightmare that there was no discovery. So she sold off and you know she said, hey, I sold too soon. I don't know where it makes more money. But this was the gaping hole. Her and our CTO, who was a CISO of the company, uh, came up with this idea of we gotta do something a little bit different, right? Because there's still a hole here. So how do we bridge this gap? How do we do something here? So there's a little, there's a little bit of content here, so I'm gonna speed up in 10 minutes. We need to do something with a gap, uh, and there's a big gap, and the problem is big data, right? It's big data because of sources. And the only way we're going to get that 360 review in the context is, is get all the data in, right? And when we get a 360 review of identities, accounts, the access, and activities, that's where we can get on the learning. We can do something with it, right? And we want to kind of close the loop around entitlements and high privilege and high uh, privilege access. Right? And we want to start putting the risk based scoring to include that so we can close this gap. And the only way we're going to do it is with machine learning and data science, not rules and not static stuff. Uh, when you start looking at this different approach, when you start looking at uh, more of the privilege access, so who's got the high privilege, right? And the super users. Uh, and then start looking at the privilege entitlements, entitlements where it's at. Um, because that's, that's where, uh, like I said, most of the tax go. If you read the, the, the your summary reports out there, that's where it's going. And it's really starting to go at the app level, too. So you need to close the loop around apps, too. Uh, and, and get a broader scope. And hence, we need to kind of do a, 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 a new approach. And I think that's what customers, that's what our customers are asking us for, a new approach to, to doing this. So I'm going to give you a couple more uh, a couple more use cases. So this is, this is slide is going to probably take us seven, eight minutes. Uh, I'm going to try to go quick. So we got access up here, right? Certifications. What we're trying to do, we're trying to avoid rubber stamping. Risk-based certifications, if we can get to that, this will increase the revocation rates, right? Uh, Marty asked for more resources. And his risk score is cool. And his intelligence are pretty, pretty decent, right? So he asked Ed, and he asked for six things, and Ed's like, yeah, okay, yes, 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 no problem, right? Cool. Next day, uh, we talked about peer groups, remember the dynamic peer groups, right? So next day, Marty asked for another entitlement, and that risk score is a 92. Right. Why are you, why are you, why are you asking for something that's risk score 92 again? So I kind of repeated that, that story a little bit, because I think it's really important. Uh, if I look at the peer groups, and then none of them have that same thing, and that's where we kind of stop things, right? So then we got, so this will help, this will help kind of get rid of, uh, when you do the risk-based certifications, this is gonna really help you get in here and start replicating some of the rights and get rid of some of the accounts, right? 
So then you got uh, access, right? Access uh, request. We want to try to avoid this right here, big time, uh, Chloe. Uh, we want to do some kind of risk-based request and risk-based approvals, right? Tracking too many checkboxes. Then we want to uh, we want to start taking some roles and intelligent roles and even SLD monitoring and, and pump in some uh, pump in some uh, analytics to open machine learning. So this is the one I like because this is my favorite story. I love this story. Orphan accounts and own accounts, right? What if it's an account, if you're trying to do some complicated, what if it's an account that you only use every 90 days? Right? Mortgage company, sales organization, every 90 days use account. It's sitting dormant. I want to just delete that account or flag it. But what if it's an account you only use once a year? Do I want to flag it or, or get rid of it? Probably not, but I want to watch it. And I want to get anomalous behavior across my organization. So when someone accesses that account that hasn't touched in 30 days or 90 days or a year, I want to know what to do with it. I want to have some context around what's going on in the environment. So I, I love the dormant accounts. I love um, the, the user roles and groups. That's where that dynamic peer group comes in. And then, you know, too much access, right? Access, access. That's a big problem. I need to know what those are. And we can give you some contacts in a 360 view around those and give you some alerts, and then we can kind of pile it all together. And then you want to always want to monitor the users, right? Privilege access ones, shared accounts, misuse, behavior analytics, and then you always want to do some, some response times right there as well. So real quick, big data. Here we go again. Big, 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 big data. So this is cool, right? Because a lot of solutions only do the prep, and a lot of solutions only do this. There's more people coming to this information right here. That's cool. You need big data. Uh, there's uh, if uh, a lot of customers are starting to lose uh, use big data. You guys that are in the sim space, you know what indexing cost is, right? It's getting cheaper. I don't want to beat up on the sim vendors, but there's a couple that are, you know, San Francisco Bay got a big office of Plano. Good good technology back in the day, but it's not today. And they don't have really big data. I don't care what they tell you. They just don't, I don't have a lot here. Um, and if you're using big data and you got cloud and on-prem, and you're using analytics for entitlements back and forth or doing uh, log dovetailing and stuff, you're paying for twice, right? It's expensive, right? So security analytics are cool, and these are SIMs cool, DLP is cool, right? EDR, CAS, these are starting to happen too. Starting to come out there, but they're a little bit slow behind the times. And SIM and DLP, I'm not saying get rid of it, I'm just saying they cut it. Right? I need that data to come to me in a big, big length so I can start looking at anomalous behavior and put the engine behind it with machine learning. So now where we're getting to is UVA, and then we'd like to get down here. Get down here to really look at the privilege access and entitlements and the users. If we do that, you're going to start getting somewhere. Um, you know, be careful, right? If uh, I had a customer the other day, five minutes. The customer the other day, um, want to look at cloud stuff. I'm worried about cloud. Yeah, what about what about all your other users? Well, I'm not worried about that. I have a project for that. Right, dude. You don't have to have a project for something. We're gonna wait for the sky to fall. I don't have a problem. You know, I should have probably scuffed these four round shoes up before I walked in the door this morning because I was broke my neck. Right? I don't have kids by the way, so I can buy four round shoes. I like it. Um, so it's so what you want to do is you want to look at you want to look at. Uh, doing something different. So with three minutes left, we need to get to intelligent roles and identity access intelligence. We want to look at reducing the access and the risk. We want to look at detecting the access outliers, right? We want to look at defining intelligent roles really quick. We want to put some risk-based provisioning around it. And then we want to enable adaptive, adaptive access so we can do what? Rapidly reduce the threat plane. This is where social and hijacking and data exfiltration is happening. They're looking to hit the threat plane on you. So we got to break and do some of that. And then last case study, another big, big company, entitlements, right? Too many entitlements. And in some cases, I'm not the database guy or licensing guy. I don't, but isn't it expensive? You have to pay for all the software and stuff. Too many accounts, right? Microsoft threw up, Oracle threw up, SAP threw up. So in this particular case, they went down from 83 to 17%. 83% reduction, that's monstrous. 
what does that do for security? We have 83 less percent of people to look at our accounts. Right? That's 83 less things are sitting around dormant that someone's not going to take advantage of them, not paying attention, taking a nap. Right? So and this is across 11 business units. So these are what we see in IDA real quick. You know, I already mentioned we do this in a cloud. Right? Cloud's like a, you know, it's like a utility you sit down there with a bunch of horsepower. If someone breaks into it and starts taking advantage of it, you don't even know it. Right? Rev up the engine and let it go and you're paying for it. Okay? So we need to do something different. Here's what you're doing today. Would you agree? Hopefully, I talk to you, or if you talk to some in the next uh, 12 to 18 months, start looking at this, because you need to do something. Um, and then, you know, make sure you're doing some machine learning, right? Make sure you got some smart guys that are not going to just sell you the, the tool that's, that's the last thing you need. I was uh, kind of friendly friendly with the, uh, I'll tell you what it is, Etna, right? He's the the CIO. He should be the CIO. He's a smart guy. And, uh, and I was in there selling a lot, so I went for a, a real big integrator a few years back. And uh, I had a badge, so I was always living there. And I was, I was, it was, they were feeding me well. I was doing a good job for them. And I had access to all the stakeholders, right, people? And he said, we were having lunch one day, and he didn't even have lunch or off, and maybe once every six months I could get on his calendar to do that. I could see him for five minutes, but I couldn't sit down and have lunch with him. He says, no, I know you talk to everybody. You do a lot of stuff for us from a security perspective, but if I see, if you see anyone buying a tool, tell me. Because if I find out it's not on a project, or not on a list, we don't need it because we're using way too many tools today, I'm gonna to fire them. That's a big company, right? And it's true, we got too much stuff. So we need to do something different, right? And this is the approach, right? You gotta do, this is a force multiplier, it really is. You take that information and you continue to use it and take the knowns with the unknowns, I think you'll be okay. I think you'll get to where you wanna be, but it's gonna be a little painful at first. So get it right, uh, let me recap. Look at someone, that is open API. Look for someone who's got dynamic peer grouping. Look for someone who's got uh, the, the ability to partner with all the data sources. Uh, and look for machine learning, true machine learning, not like, yeah, yeah, we do machine learning, right? Uh, and make sure that uh, you have someone who's gonna partner with you for success, not give you another tool that you don't need or you're not gonna use it. So get it right, okay? If you want my card, I'm going to be here for a little while today. Uh, uh, case studies, we have a bunch of used case studies, like I said, the web stuff. I hope it was good content. I hope it was, uh, went a little longer than I thought, but I thought I talked slower with the, with the slip and fall, but I got everything I did. And I didn't have any coffee either, so it's amazing. So thank you very much.